Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Well, this morning I've got everything cleaned off from the last job and I'm looking the machine over, looking for ways that I can improve its rigidity. In the last job I had, I was running through some three quarter inch Baltic birch and I found whenever I made a pass that was mostly in the X axis, it had a tendency to try and pick up some chatter every now and then. Uh, the material is very consistent, so I'm not blaming the material as much. Um, so I want to see what I can change on the machine to improve that before I go on to the next job, which is cutting some very expensive solid surface material. So I have three ideas that I can implement on this machine, and I think we're going to start with two. I'd always planned to put some gussets in between the two pieces of tubing to improve the rigidity. So that's one thing we're going to do. The other thing we're going to do to improve rigidity is we're going to reduce the amount of reach. The further up inside the holder I could get this spindle, the better. And uh, that in turn means, strictly with that, less reach. This is a pretty, I, I would say that's a very rigid connection right there, but it's the leverage that's exerted just by mechanical advantage between down here and the bearings and up here. This distance here, from here up to this first bearing, is a long reach. And I had planned the machine for a pretty healthy reach. So I'm looking at this going, hmm, how can I reduce that distance quick and easy by even a little bit and be able to undo it at the same time? What I've decided to do is I'm going to really quickly buy myself a reduction of three quarters of an inch there by simply taking the other half of the sheet of spoil board that I have and putting it underneath this one. So we're gonna lift this spoil board up. We're actually gonna turn it over, start fresh again, and add the second sheet underneath. So now that I have the gantry all tied together with bracing and everything is checked as I possibly can. I'm going to take this opportunity to try tramming this head. This is something I've never done on this machine. I built it and it performed pretty well so I never tried it. So we're going to try it now and see how it does. So here we are at I'll call it 90 degrees to the spindle in this fashion and we're at zero right here. And then as I swing this around to our left, we're dropping off. We come around to 90 degrees and we drop off right there to 70 thousandths. And if we go the same the other direction, we've come back through zero. It's kind of hard to do without making everybody ill. And coming back to 90 degrees, we're back to 70 thousandths. And I guess the only good thing I can say there is left to right, we seem to be spot on. Front to back, not so much. So let me choke up on this mounting rod here a little bit so we can go a full 180 degrees. Okay, I've choked things up and lowered down the spindle <clears throat> so we have enough stroke. This is pretty pathetic. So forward facing, we're at zero, and I don't know if I'd be able to get this back here or not. You might have to take my word for it. 
No, oh, there we go. We got her. And back here, we're off by almost sixty thousands. So what this means, in an exaggerated fashion, is this is the plane that the bottom of the cutter is riding in. Which is why I'm seeing that little bit of stair step, which apparently is a little more than I thought. So, that tells me that this whole thing is tipped forward, which would go right along with the massive amount of weight that's hanging off the front. So, all we can do is compensate for it. I'll get some shim material out. And about the best place, I think, to accommodate this is going to be to shim underneath these screws here on both sides and try and bring them out. This is the shim material I'm using. Pink being the biggest in this package, that was a 15,000 shim. So, I've got the indicator mounted back on. Let's see how she does. Oh, I can tell you already that's better. It's actually going the opposite direction. So it was dropping 30 or 40 thousandths just in that turn right there. Now we've gained about 4 thousandths. So let's see what it looks like across the back. We're zeroing back out. So what that tells me now is we have a left to right issue. So if we're high here on the left by four thousandths. Let's come around to the other side and see what we're at. Here we're down by about five thousandths. So now front to back looks wonderful, but we've got a little bit of a tip left to right. So we'll adjust that with uh, some gentle persuasion and see if we can't dial it in just using what slop is in these mounting holes. Okay, with a little mild persuasion with the hammer, we are looking fab. Okay, for a router that has this much movement in it, I'll take, what is that, two thousands? Two and a half thousands, left to right. And front to back is about the same. Yeah, I'll take that. Well, I am super pleased with how this has turned out. It's trammed in better than I had expected it to. And between that and the extra bracing we put up in the gantry, I think those are going to be a lot of improvement for this machine. Especially when it was cutting bottoms, I won't get that stair step near as bad. I'm going to uh, clean up everything here, put the surface plate and the indicator away. Then I'll break out a piece of Corian, make some test cuts. In the meantime, thanks for joining me in the shop today, and we'll see you next time. You're still here. And hence, some gratuitous footage. I came together a quick little, uh, looks like a coaster when it was all said and done and cut out. I took a hundred thousandths depth of cut and just cut a big open flat area. This is a quarter inch two fluted end mill and I wanted to see how much improvement I'd made getting rid of those stair steps. Suffice it to say it did really well. The bottom is extremely smooth. You can see tool pathing but that's to be expected with anything um, but the stair steps are essentially gone for all intents and purposes. So, From here on out periodic checks and tuning are all that will be required.